Today I want to show you how to paint a large group of plants in oil paints. Groups of plants have so much textures and colors going on, and so how do we recreate that on a two-dimensional surface? We are going to be working from big to small, breaking down these large objects into smaller ones, adding more layers of texture, doing some blending, and then painting some overlapping objects over the previous ones. So let's get started. I have these basic shapes I had already established, and I made sure to wait for this layer to dry. What I'm going to do first is do some preliminary work where I elaborate more on these shapes, making sure they blend better into each other. I want to create this halo effect on the top edges of these bushes. I'm using a very desaturated green color for that, and what this does is help create a better transition between the top of the plant and the bottom of the one behind it. The reason why I'm using this grayish color is because it also helps push out the colors of the plant and flowers that emerge from it when I paint them later. It helps draw more attention to the center of the bush, and gives it a more three-dimensional effect. Next, I start painting the shadows in the bottom of this group of plants. Mind you, I'm not focusing entirely on one thing right now, so I'm just painting the bottom outline here where you're going to have the edges of these plants meet. Now I'm using a desaturated green color, and I'm going to integrate it with these black smudges I had just painted. This color will help with the transition, so that these neutral colors won't draw too much attention. As I'm applying it, I'm also blending it with a bright color I had just painted. Next, I get a more saturated green, and I'm adding it to this area here. I'm continuing adding these small smudges of color, and I'm going to very carefully blend them next to each other. When you have lots of plants clustered together, you're going to want to use color variety because there is so much biodiversity, and using various mixtures of green helps prevent the painting from looking flat. Now I want to start adding the texture to the body of this plant. I'm using a neutral green color here, and am adding these smudges across here. Then I get a brighter green to match the color of the base I had originally established and integrated it with these smudges on here. I also blend it with that top edge of this plant, continuing the process of blending all these colors together. Then I get a slightly darker green and continue adding these textures across this bush. These colors are going to get darker as they get closer to the bottom. This helps round out the shapes of these plants. When you paint these textures, you need to pay attention also to the overall trend of color and value that you're painting on a larger scale. Next, I get a red and magenta mixture with a small amount of white. I'm going to start to add these red smudges here. These are going to be the flowers inside the bush, and this is just the first layer. Then just like with the green colors, I use a darker red mixture here and add this layer as I move closer to the bottom. Don't paint these too aggressively because I want to be able to mix these along with their adjacent colors I have just established here. One thing I want to point out here in these beginning stages is that you want to start off simple. Don't paint any complex things just yet. Instead, what you want to do is work from big to small and start out easy and simple. Then I get a green color again and use it to blend the adjacent colors. Don't worry too much if you're over blending at this stage of painting. The focus here is to create a sense of unity amongst the colors. Painting landscapes, especially plants, you're going to have a combination of blending and sharp detail. Right now, at this stage of the painting, things are actually going to look worse before they get better. We are setting up the foundation, and then later on we will build upon that by painting the sharper and more intricate details. Also, notice how these red colors blend with some of the top part of this plant, with how they become more desaturated and kind of disappear at the edge of this bush. That's another reason why I used such a grayish color earlier in the video. I continue adding some darker parts here in the bottom parts of these bushes, and then integrating them as well. I want to add some more paint on these red flowers. Even though this layer is still wet, I'm going to carefully add these pink dots on top of some of these red smudges I just painted. These are naturally going to be the brightest ones, and so I'll put these closer to the top. I continue adding these smaller textures to the other areas of this painting. Are you noticing yet why I used so much blending in the beginning? Look at how the edges of these plants integrate with the others adjacent to them, and how they have a better sense of unity. Another thing I want to point out is that right now I'm focusing on each individual object, but later on I'm going to break them down by adding more shapes and smaller objects that overlap them. Okay, so now this whole layer is dry, and we can add another layer of color. Now we can start to sharpen things up and get some visible details here. This time we are going to paint these sharper red and magenta colors here and paint these small smudges on top. The main idea here is to paint inside the small areas that we blended earlier so that we can see these sharp details and then they kind of radiate outward as they disappear into the adjacent colors. Remember to pay attention to the overall values here, 
so that as you paint closer to the top, the values will be brighter, but as you go down, the values will get darker. All of the same principles I've showed you with this plant are the same ones you will use with the other plants I'm working on in this painting. Keep the brushing random here. Don't create patterns because nature has all sorts of random ways that plants, leaves, and flowers are put together. You can lump some of these small brush strokes together into clusters, but be careful as not to go overboard. Make sure to leave space here for the leaves inside this bush, which I'm going to be doing the same thing as well. Now I get a dark red and magenta mixture and add some darker textures here in the bottom. This may seem excessive as this does almost look black, but I'm going to integrate some lighter mixtures as well to create that contrast that helps round out this plant. Now I add some red and magenta here to solidify these flowers here in the bottom. Notice how this plant is really taking shape now, and how all these principles from the very beginning are coming together. The edges of it disappear into the background, and the attention is drawn towards the body of it. Also, see how all that blended color helps draw attention to the sharper details more, so that these objects kind of emerge from the ether. But let's not stop there. I want to add another layer for the green textures that are the shadows for the leaves. This time they're going to be sharper, and I won't blend them together as much. Let me go back real quick and add some more pink smudges on the top part here, because I feel like there's not enough. You're going to have a more condensed area of flowers at the top part, and then they spread out more as you go down. Now I want to add the brightest green leaves up here. Mind you, this still is not the final layer, believe it or not. Later on, I'm going to add some more layers to help solidify this plant. So basically what we are doing here is stacking these layers on top of each other, and we are essentially sculpting a three-dimensional object into a two-dimensional surface. Then, I clean and dry my brush, and come back here to do a very small amount of blending. This time around, I want to make sure to use a small brush like this because we want to do this thing called partial blending, where we pick and choose random areas to slightly blend, but leave other areas alone. If you ever feel that you overblend an area, that's no problem because you can always wait for it to dry and come back to add the sharper parts to it later. Anyways, let's take a break from this and work on some other things. So this small magenta tree I worked on earlier is dry now. And so just like with everything else I've painted, I had first established these textures, and so now I want to add some more layers here to signify some leaves emerging from the background. I'm adding another layer of texture here, but this time I don't want to add too much of it because I want to leave enough breathing room and dry space for the bright magenta colors I'm about to paint on here. So don't brush too aggressively. Just add a thin layer of these dark smudges and then we can move on. Also, one important thing I want to point out here. Notice how all these textures I painted are inside the body of the plant, and how the outer edges of this plant blend into the adjacent green surroundings. Just like with everything else we've painted so far, make sure to preserve the outer edges by keeping them blended and not over textured. Now I come back to add the most outward leaves in this small tree. Basically I'm stacking this layer of brighter leaves over the underlying texture. Keep the brushing random and create these small clusters so that they don't create any patterns but instead are emerging from all that texturing and blending. Also, notice how I'm not painting that many of these sharp details over the edges of this tree. I want to preserve these blended edges so that they have a more seamless transition into the green surroundings. I kind of create this halo effect around the plant, giving it a more radiating appearance and it helps bring out the details in the middle. As you're painting these, you could blend a few of them here and there to strike a balance between the sharp detail and the blending. Keep that in the back of your mind as you continue working on this. Now I paint a few outliers that branch off the main body of the plant and are interspersed throughout the surrounding greenery. This is an important thing to do with the larger groups of plants because it helps the painting look more organic and natural, and also helps prevent the painting from looking stiff and rigid. Remember that in a landscape, you have so many shapes and sizes of objects that collide, intersect, and emerge from one another. Let's come back to this plant here. I want to paint some larger types of flowers here, which are going to be white, but of course I can't just use a solid white for this in the beginning. However, I don't want to use the gray either. I'm using a very desaturated purple, but blue is fine too, and this way you can paint these shaded flowers inside the shadows. Since these flowers are going to be larger than the ones in the red bush, you're going to want to pay attention more to their shapes and texture later on when I work on that. Now I get a brighter mixture of white and add it on top of what I had just painted. Don't paint any solid colors, but paint this kind of porous layer over it so that we can see some of the texture inside each of these white flowers. Some of them I want to leave alone partially, and others I'm going to very carefully blend into the background. 
Anyways, now I want to wait for this layer to dry and then later on we'll come back once more to add the final sharp details. Now that we have all these main plants established, we need to have a few smaller objects that are integrated amongst these larger plants. It's important to do this because this way the painting will look more natural and organic. There's so many different random plants that come out in all sorts of directions and we need to create that diversity here. This area has a few plants that intersect and so I want to add some random brushing here with a variety of color that would make the transition smoother. When you're painting a large group of plants, you're going to have all sorts of textures and colors that are blended together that create these transitions from one plant to another. I come back up here and work around these leaves by reapplying some darker colors around it to blend it some more. Adding more layers is going to happen a lot, so don't be afraid to paint over some parts to continue refining the painting. So basically what I'm doing is looking for any tight or flat areas and loosen them up by breaking them down with more brushing and blending. At this stage of painting we are going to also focus on the overall image by checking the various spots to see if we can elaborate more on them by loosening them up. That's going to be the underlying factor here. Here I'm going to add some flowers but first I want to add some wetness to the surface by adding some dark green leaves that emerge from the shadows. I'm going to add these blue brush strokes and integrate them carefully with their surroundings. I want these blue flowers to emerge from the shadows so that they overlap the plant behind them. But I'm not stopping there. Now I highlight the ones furthest outside so that you can see this value transition. Creating gradients in value is also important because it helps add to the dynamic lighting your painting needs. And so it's pretty much the same thing here with these red leaves. I'm expanding upon all these objects by looking around what I painted so far and seeing if anything else needs to be loosened up and blended. The thing you want to be conscious of as you paint is to picture these small plants, leaves and flowers emerging from the background and also integrating with each other. And since this is indeed a painting and not a photograph, we can exaggerate some things here to create a more fantasy atmosphere. Then I go back and do some more miscellaneous work with adding textures, as well as continuing adding more small objects that overlap the larger plants. So here I want to sharpen these flowers by adding more textures. Before you do this, make sure the previous layer is dry so we can keep this brushing sharp. I'm getting a very desaturated blue here and applying these very small indentations inside these flowers. Earlier in the video we did textures on a larger scale, but now I want to focus on getting these small indentations to sharpen things up. When you get closer to finishing these plants, it's important to make sure that they have that balance of blending and detail. And so now I'm working on an even smaller scale. Same thing with this orange plant. I'm coming back after this layer has dried also, and I'm adding a very slightly darker but still vivid orange over these bright areas to add some more texture over the flowers. Notice how throughout this painting I'm going back and forth everywhere after the previous layer dried and stacking more layers, sharper and smaller each time. I'll be doing the same thing on the red plant as well. Now I'm adding the final sharpest brushing over these blended areas where you can see these red leaves emerge from the background. So spend some time looking around the painting to see any other areas where you can add some sharper detail, putting in some small clusters of leaves or flowers emerging from the blended backgrounds. Now with this white plant I want to finish adding more texture inside the green leaf area. I want to solidify this bush and round it out more by adding more contrast and sharpness. You'll be doing the same thing with the other ones as well. I'm coming close to finishing this painting. You could go around to see what other areas need to be finished. Look around and see if there are any spots that look too flat or could use more contrast. Check any areas that look too rigid and angular and loosen them up. Notice how everything I worked on is put together here with all these layers of textures and colors. It really comes down to a science, using specific techniques to get the results. Of course there's the creativity aspect, but you have to use both in order to maximize what you're painting. Did you find this video helpful? Let me know in the comments, share this video with your friends, and subscribe to stay updated on my latest art demos and talking points. I'll see you in the next one.